everyone and uh, welcome to the uh, first session of a morning which is going to focus on innovation in the water industry. Um, it's two SBWWIR. We're a, a trade association representing both clean and dirty aspects of the water industry. Uh, approximately 100 plus members. Um, formed 25, 26 years ago now. Um, and our membership is drawn from manufacturers, contractors, distributors, training providers, consultants, ranging from large pipe manufacturers, tier one contractors, to specialist niche skill providers, and even smaller component manufacturers. Along with recent policy documents, um, we are also very much focused on bringing innovation and promoting innovation into the water industry. Well, why is innovation needed? Well, what we have in the UK is largely a legacy industry. A lot of the existing pipework, still carrying water, was either installed in Victorian times or is based on engineering principles that were developed during that era. And prior to privatization in 1990, the UK water industry had suffered from chronic underinvestment and there were real issues foreseen in meeting the requirements of European legislation. Privatization was undertaken partly with a view of encouraging investment in the infrastructure, and there's no doubt this has largely been achieved. Approximately £9 billion has been invested in the infrastructure and asset improvements since 1990. However, the regulatory regime that was developed to control the water companies has not encouraged innovation. It has focused on delivering the necessary investment to meet regulatory environmental standards and to deliver operational efficiencies. This has meant little stimulus for the industry itself to be less risk averse in terms of adopting new technology. In addition, the resetting of the baseline every five years has meant that the benefit of any outperformance arising from adoption of innovation is lost at the next determination. Now the Council for Science and Technology, which is the, the body that advises the government on science and technology policy, had a report in 2009 and identified the risk aversion in the water industry with no water companies at that time identifying themselves as willing to be guinea pigs on new technology. Furthermore, the industry spend on research and development as a percentage of turnover is very low when compared with other regulated industries such as energy. So, why is innovation such a hot topic at the moment? There's now a groundswell of change. The CAVE review on competition and innovation in the water industry made several recommendations to improve the uptake of innovation, and these re resonated with government's policy advisors. Something needs to change. Ofwat seems to have taken this on board in their recent publication on future price limits. We look forward to particularly what the impact of moving from outputs to outcomes and from capex to totex will bring. There are many definitions of innovation, um, but some common themes emerge. It's about new ideas, or at least new ideas to a particular sector that they're being brought to, that are implemented and bring a benefit to the adopting organization. So how can a company in the supply chain bring its new idea, product, technology, service, process, to the implementation stage? Well, hopefully that's where the SBWWI come in. Because the key is to get the idea to the right people at the right time for implementation to take place. Uh, we have a group within the society called the Innovation Research and Development Forum, which proactively promotes technology to the water companies and also to tier one contractors. But we're particularly proud of our Water Dragons event, our annual Water Dragons event. What is Water Dragons event? Well, it's based on the television series, The Dragons, then, um, and companies are uh, given 10 minutes to pitch their idea to four or five senior water technology, water industry personnel, the dragons. And when, they get, when they've done their 10 minutes, they get 20 minutes of grilling. 
And believe me, these water dragons can grill them like the dragons do on television. It sometimes gets very uncomfortable. Yes? Good. So in this year, uh, from all the uh, entries that were uh, submitted, we shortlisted eight, uh, which have shown up on there, on there to uh, pitch to the water dragons in October of last year. Uh, very pleased that uh, the three winners, uh, 3M, Cobus, and Morrison Utility Services are with us today. And this will give you an opportunity to see the innovations which are out there um, and uh, what we're really promoting within the industry. There will be a question and answer session at the end. Um, so uh, I'll look forward to uh, getting some questions at the end and uh, our panel will be ready to answer any questions you have, hopefully. Thank you very much. Thank you, David. Good morning, everybody. My name is Ian Tindall. I'm with 3M UK. And this presentation is going to be on cost-effective alternative solutions for replacing small diameter communication pipes. So this is a statement made by Ofwat at the beginning of the current AMP period. This is where they're looking for people to be innovative to meet the challenges of the industry. 3M as a company believe innovation is very important and spend around one billion, that's billion dollars a year on innovation to, to develop new products coming out. And last year developed about 1,300 new products alone globally. So that's quite something. We also have a thing called a vitality index where we're looking to have 40% of our sales coming from products that didn't exist five years ago. So basically, something that didn't exist in 2007 doesn't take into consideration in ourselves. So we're very, very driven by innovation and moving things forward. This presentation today, we're going to be talking about some collaborative work between three companies. One is Yorkshire Water, the client who had a particular need Second was our company, 3M, who had knowledge and resource to develop new resins for the lining of existing lead service pipes underground. And thirdly, Whirlwind Utilities was a company with specialist knowledge on the use of air vortex to clean pipes and apply a resin. So what was the driver? What was it all about? Well, basically, there's, there's new legislation coming into place next year where they're going to reduce the maximum allowable amount of lead in your water supply down from 25 micrograms per litre to 10 micrograms per litre. Which is quite a sort of a, a shift in as it goes. This is primarily coming about from the lead service pipes that go from the main in the street to people's houses, and generally on houses that were built before 1970. It is estimated that there are about 9.3 million lead service pipes in this country and about 6.3 million communication pipes. So there's quite a significant amount of lead service pipes out there at the present time. So what is the challenge? So current methods for small diameter communi pipe, communication pipes basically have a high impact. So you have a street and what happens is that vehicles turn up and lots of people turn up, and lots of holes are dug in the ground outside, which causes disruption for the local people there. You've got people with their prized dahlias in their front gardens, and nice new driveways there. So it has quite an impact. Also, you have to understand this uh, traditional methods, you can only do about 15 services a week. That's 15 services a week. So you can imagine if you've got 6.3 million of these services, communication pipes around the country, you're only doing 15 a week with a crew. It can take a long, long time, especially if the legislation is coming in next year. So there must be a better way of doing this. So this is where this, we talk about the Sirline system, the new method. So basically what it is, it's a method which you can actually clean and line the existing lead services and other metals underground, not replacing them or relining them to meet the new legislation. 
this method, actually, it only takes about five minutes to clean the pipes and about seven minutes to line with the resin. So you're talking about 15 minutes per property to clean and line, which that enables us to do between 14 and 20 properties a day, as opposed to the typical average for replacement of about 15 a week. So it's quite a, a step in the efficiency of how companies can work using this methodology. And obviously at the end of it, the water companies are looking at capital efficiency. Does this be a cheaper alternative to what they're already doing? Well, obviously the answer is yes, and it's approximately about one third of traditional methods. One third of the cost of traditional methods. The other point is coming back to about disruption. This is a, a pictures of um, a street in Leeds, and you can see that there is one van there, which is basically does the cleaning and lining. The whole operation, so you haven't got lots of different pieces of equipment going up the down the street. And they completed this street within the morning from that point of view. So you can see that it moves through very, very quickly, minimizing any disruption to the consumers there. This is another shot just showing the, uh, the guys working on the van there. And they're actually able to work in this particular shot. They're able to clean and line three communication pipes for one excavation. So what I'm going to do is just show you a quick video now. Hopefully, if it fits in. We all wait. Yeah, ah, magic, magic there. So you're not going deaf. There is actually no sound with this particular video. But it just shows you. And here we are actually showing that there's a hose going from the, the, uh, the, the rig down the pipe and actually using the air vortex technology to clean the pipe. And the black box there collects any lead that's coming out of the lead pipe so it's not dissipated in the atmosphere. So this goes on for about five minutes. And the use of this air vortex and there's a, there's a medium in there that cleans the pipe from that point of view. The side operative there is then disconnecting the line from cleaning, and then you're then going to connect it to where the resin, and the resin is then going to be blown down using this air vortex technology, coating the pipe. The resin actually is, is a two-part material, which is mixed in the van. It goes off very, very quickly. Currently, we have a return to service time of four hours, but we're looking to reduce that to just two hours. What the guy is doing here is actually doing a quality check. And here, he actually takes samples of the resin, the mixed resin, to make sure it's all right, and they're kept for record purposes. It should be noted that on the rig itself, also, there is a computer which sends information back to engineers sitting in their office in real time. So they can actually understand what is actually happening on site. They will have a GPS, they'll know exactly where the rig is and actually where they're lining outside whose houses and doing all that. This picture is actually showing where the resin is actually then coming. I don't know if you can see in the bottom picture there where the resin is appearing at the far end, being blown through. So it's not used in traditional equipment it's actually been blown through the, the line itself so it doesn't matter if there's a change in diameter of the pipe or if it twists or turns or there's loops in the ground and that takes on average about seven minutes to achieve that because we're talking about lead it's a very flexible material so the resin has to be flexible in itself so you can see in the top of the picture there you have somebody actually bending pipe that's been cut in half completely in circles so it doesn't crack. That is really very important because obviously you don't want it in the ground, you don't want movement in the ground which might cause problems later. It's quite amazing actually if you have a very small area of lead that's exposed, the lead levels can, can go through the roof. Again because it's actually been blown through the pipe it can cope with changes in diameter of the pipe. Remembering that lead is a malleable material, it can get squashed. Somebody came along at the time it stood on it, it can change. So because no equipment is actually going through the pipe, it can cater with that as well. It can also line around tight bends, 
stock taps, and can be applied to different materials such as galvanized steel, copper as well. As I said earlier on, results then sent directly to the engineer's computer back in the office there, telling him exactly how the operation is gone. So what was the objectives of this? It was basically to have a one-stop operation where you have one van that was able to do the cleaning and lining, minimizing the footprint on the ground. It's a highly productive solution. To say currently achieving around 14 properties per day or a target of up to 20 properties per day. This is against the, the typical average for a replacement of about 15 a week from that point of view. So it is a very, very cost-efficient system. And as I said before, it's about a third of the price of traditional methods of being used. So what have we achieved today? Well, we have a BS6920 approval, testing completed. We also have a method statement, a methodology, an aim that's been written in collaboration with WRC, which allows water companies and operatives to understand how to use this technology. To date, more than a thousand properties have been lined in Yorkshire under 314C, the DWI, which allows us to actually experiment with new innovative products. As such as well. And we're currently, hopefully, to be gaining full DWI approval in the very near future. This is a quick test slide that actually have a look just to prove the point that actually if you coat the pipe with our resin system, compared to the bare pipe, that shows the amount of lead per parts per million. Once you've coated it, you can actually reduce it to less than 10 parts per billion using the system. One of the interesting points also with the communication pipes is that it's estimated that it accounts around 25% of the total leakage in the ground at the present time. And tests that have been done by independent body, WRC, where they've put holes and cut slots into it, have shown us a significant amount of reduction in leakage. We're also doing tests on site before and after to prove that leakage is reduced using this methodology. That's the end of the presentation. Thank you very much for your time. Hi, I'm Rena Patel from Cobus Services Limited, developers and manufacturers of the Cobus Pipe Puller. The Cobus Pipe Puller is a new, innovative solution to removing and replacing water pipes in one single action. The Cobus Pipe Puller replaces old lead, PVC and copper pipes in around 25% of the time and at much less cost of traditional methods. And the industry has responded well to this innovation with it receiving recognition in a number of awards over the past two years. In particular, the SBWWI Water Dragons Innovation Award has provided great uh, uh, interest within, for our tool. Uh, success at these awards provides great publicity. The industry finds these awards useful as a mark of uh, peer recognition. Our current investors and potential investors value these awards as signs of uh, efforts to promote the product thus increasing sales and returns, and also as approval from the industry. Preparing the submission sharpens our focus and allows us to think hard about both our message and our medium. And furthermore, um, delivering the message allows us to practice for the real sales effort. So, what is the Cobus Pipe Puller? It is an innovative new system for removing and replacing water pipes. It is an ideal solution for water companies and their contractors as it is safer, cheaper, faster and a better method for pipe replacement. It assists in meeting key performance indicators in areas such as leakage, customer service, cost, water quality, safety, sustainability and carbon footprint reduction. It is currently used in both lead replacement programs and emergency repairs and it has been proven to be less disruptive than existing methods with the road being able to remain open throughout the entirety of the operation. So, to understand how the Cobus Pipe Puller works is to see it in action. I'm about to show you a short video, hopefully, of the Cobus Pipe Puller in use. <laughs>
When it comes to replacing lead or leaking water pipes, there is now a new innovative solution which does the job in 25% of the time. It saves money and time for water companies and contractors. It minimizes disruption for the general public and is ideal for removing both water supply pipes and long and short communication pipes. That new solution is the Cobus Pipe Puller. Without the need to dig a trench, the Cobus Pipe Puller replaces lead, copper and old PVC water supply pipes with new MDPE pipe. Quickly, simply, cheaply and without damage to other underground services. It can also replace the communication pipe under the road between the mains and the stopcock without affecting the traffic. It works by feeding a cable through the existing pipe and filling it with cobite, a special bonding solution. The cable is then attached to the new pipe and as the old is removed, the new just follows in to replace it. And with a new water quality legislation coming into effect in 2012, along with proposals regarding the future ownership of the supply pipe inside the residential boundary, the Cobus pipe puller could not have come at a better time for water companies and their contractors. The system uses a pipe pulling kit for each pipe replacement, containing everything you need to complete the job. All you have to supply is the new pipe. We've also thought about disposal and have a number of options for recycling the pipe and cable. Full training, information and courses are available covering all the operation and health and safety requirements of the system. The Cobus Pipe Puller will transform the way you replace damaged or lead water pipes, saving you time and money and ensuring happier customers. So call now for a demonstration. The Cobus Pipe Puller, another brilliant solution from Cobus. So, what are the benefits to industry? Well, it is a safer, cheaper, greener, better and faster method for water pipe replacement. It has been carefully designed so that no individual component weighs more than 30 kilograms, which is incredibly important for the health and safety of the operators. Um, the existing pipe is removed from the ground and the new pipe simply slots in its place. With that, compared to moulding, there is no risk of damage to any other services underground. Uh, in particular with electricity and gas mains, which can pose serious risk of injury to the operators. Uh, furthermore, productivity from field crews is also increased with a 10 metre water pipe replacement taking no longer than around 50 minutes from actually cutting the supply of water to reconnecting. And let's face it, we all hate disruption to the traffic when people are putting new services into the roads. But with this Cobus pipe puller, this is eliminated. With only two small access holes needed at either end of the pipe, the roads can remain open throughout operation. Um, direct and indirect road closure costs are eliminated. Costs associated with planning and implementing highway closures do not need to occur anymore with the Cobus pipe puller. Further savings can be made through labour, as only a two-man team is required to operate the tool. By speeding up lead replacement programmes, um, water companies can be seen as improving the health of its customers. It can be um, seen as, excuse me, um, the, one moment, with the strict requirements of meeting leakage targets and also the new water policy legislation coming into effect in 2013 of 10 micrograms of lead per litre, the Cobus Pipe Puller is an ideal solution to meet those needs. Perhaps though, more importantly, the most um, significant factor of the Pipe Puller is the fact that the pipe can be replaced from the ground and the old pipe can be recycled. We have submitted our findings for carbon positivity to two leading universities for independent verification, as we believe the, carbon, the Cobus Pipe Puller is carbon positive. So, what do our customers think of the tool? John Hammond of Southend-on-Sea Borough Council 
believes it's a brilliant and innovative idea that works well and meets all present day criteria. As moling is prohibited due to the dangers and risks involved within the South End on Sea area, the Cobras Pipe Puller is opportune as it is safe with low risk to the operator or the public. Kevin Lodell, part of the lead replacement program team within Essex and Suffolk Water, believes that using existing methods, a particular job would have taken at least two days to complete. The Cobus method saved more than £2,000 in labour and reinstatement costs alone. And finally, Howard Lewis of Veolia Water Central believes the Cobus pipe puller is a key part of their future armoury for service pipe renewals in different environments and for emergency repairs. To conclude, the Cobus pipe puller is a brand new innovative approach to water service pipe replacement. It is safer with no chance of damaging any other services. It is cheaper, possessing significant savings in both time and money. It is greener, having strong environmental benefits. It is faster, having a technical advantage over both moulding and open cut techniques. And it is better, as it improves customer service. The Cobus Pipe Puller is an innovation that is recognised by the water industry and we believe it will become the preferred method of choice for replacing water pipes. Thank you. Good morning ladies and gentlemen, my name is Tony Hanks from Morrison Utilities and I'm the Innovation and Outperformance Manager primarily based on the Yorkshire water contracts in the north of the country where we've enjoyed a term of about 14 years on the repair and maintenance contract and we've just secured the whole of Yorkshire for the next nine years. So we've got a long term track history uh, with Yorkshire water who have a great uh, environment for promoting innovation within the clean water industry. What I want to share with you today is a little innovation that we've been developing, which actually, funnily enough, supports the two previous presentations in terms of the lead replacement program. There's a great problem in the highways, certainly in cul de sacs, and actually tracing the service pipe back from the property boundary of the customer back to the feral position on the main. And that's the reason this project was first started. What's happened is that it's actually migrated and the further applications have been added to it, which has actually made it quite a versatile uh, tool out in the, uh, in the operational environment. So water siren itself is a very simple little thing. It's based on the principle of the World War II air, uh, air raid siren, where you have a set of rotating discs with slots in them. And as these slots are lined and the air is forced through, you get a unique signal, the siren sound. So with a water siren, we do it with water. So you've got a little 12 volt uh, motor on there, which can be hooked up to a vehicle or to a large uh, leisure battery or through a power converter from main supply. And you actually just hook it up to a standard garden tap on the back of the customer's house. Or as you'll see in the uh, next picture, it can be on a standpipe on a hydrant or out of an MSM chamber. And really what you're doing there is you're just opening the tap and allowing the water to flow through the siren, through those discs. And as you get the alignment, you get this unique signal. Now you can change this signal by frequency, but the clever bit about this is the signal actually tra transmits along in the body of the pressurized water in the pipe. All other signal tracing methods out there actually rely on the material in the wall of the pipe as a medium to transfer their signal and they pick it up. So it's quite uniquely different in the way that it's um, put together. As you'll see there, we're working with a company called Mekon from Cambridge. They are sort of a technology supply com company um, that have co-developed this with us in collaboration. And uh, it's been a very successful um, project so far. Just gives you an idea of the breakdown of it. It's a fairly complex little bit of kit. It's fully patented and um, it'll be going out into the commercial market towards the end of this year. Just the, the listening end as such, um, that's the first prototype. Um, and basically it's a ground accelerometer or a ground microphone. It's got a spike on the end, so actually when you're in soft ground, you can push it into the ground, or you just actually put it on the surface there. And that actually picks up that unique signal that's being transmitted through the water in the pipe below the ground. And you actually do a sort of a, a cross section, and you actually find out where the highest signal is, 
and you mark it and you actually trace your route through to, to locate the position of your pipe under the ground. This is all done live while the customer's water supply stays on, so there's no interruption to customer supply, and apart from a very low buzzing noise, the customer is unaware that actually anything is going on at all. Just a couple of case studies. This is one that was done in Sheffield um, before the prototype was actually completed. So you'll see that the box on the floor there is a ground accelerometer and a piece of lab equipment to listen for the signal. The right-hand picture shows a heated driveway. This customer had a heated driveway and there was no way he was going to allow anyone to dig underneath it. The history of the job was that this customer wanted an external stop tap installed on, on the property boundary because his internal stop tap had started to pass water. He was going away for a six-week six holiday to Bermuda or somewhere. It was the cold of winter and he wanted to make sure that there was no way he was going to sustain any leakage or damage in his property. If you look at the left-hand picture, the water company on nine separate occasions sent out field technicians to try and mark the position where the excavation should be made to intersect the supply pipe and install the stop tap at the boundary. The patchwork quilt you can see there is a result of nine separate excavation, backfill and reinstatement activities over a period of nine months. It's nine months to actually try and find it without success. So we're talking of the region of a cost of between seven and ten thousand pounds. A very frustrated customer who ended up writing a letter of complaint to the CEO of the water company and still no resolution to the job. We hooked up our water siren to the, the tap at the back of the house, a large property, so about 40 meters away. You just see it hooked up there amongst the bushes. And as you can see, they're out on the footpath. We've got our boffin from Meek on there, who's uh, with the gray hair. He's looking for that unique signal with this signal, signal rec recognition unit. The traffic cone is full of sand. And that is to act as a shield so that actually the influence of stray frequencies from traffic and particularly uh, aircraft overhead, which you will not hear with a human ear, but are actually very easily picked up the ground accelerometer, do not confuse the signal that you're looking for. So you actually tune in to the signal that the water siren is actually transmitting. After about 25 minutes, we had a mark on the footpath and we traced, traced it off the driveway as well. So the customer knew exactly where that pipe went, up his driveway, underneath his house, under his garage, at the back, under his conservatory, and along to the supply at the back. Half an hour later, that's what we found, the excavation. 15 millimeter copper supply. Even after we'd actually opened up and found the supply, we had a cat and Jenny hooked onto the back and it still could not trace out and pick a signal up 40 meter w meters away in the street. The MSM chamber was installed, the customer was happy, and the job was done. Second application was at a set of uh, municipal allotments uh, in Wakefield where the supply had been on a standard tariff, just a standing tariff for about five years. A job was raised in 2005 to go and install a meter because it was a very, very extensive set of allotments. There was a lot of water being used. People were keeping livestock and chickens behind high fences. There was all sorts of little businesses going on. So consumption was actually pretty appreciable. Again, over that period of about five years, six or seven attempts were made to go and locate that pipe and install a meter at the boundary without success. About an hour after we started tracing it, we actually had to trace it all up through the yard and we actually found a signal at the boundary. As you can see there, it's a very loose fill and the blue water pipe there was actually shielded by an electrical duct, the blue rib duct. So there was a void there, so the signal was transmitted up, was actually having to go through a very incom incontinent or incompetent um, structure of soil and ground to actually get to the surface. However, the water siren managed to do that. A meter in the chamber were fitted, and we are now monitoring to actually see what the actual consumption is to all of those allotments. And uh, when the first year is up, a study will be done to actually look at the, chain, the comparison in actual consumption to what the standing charge was and what the value is going to be going forward of not having installed that meter 
five years ago when the job was first there. This unit is not the be all and end all to every job. You don't need to use it on every job. If you use your common sense and what's out there, you can pick up a lot. But every water company has got a lot of difficult jobs out there, which takes them an endless amount of time and guesswork to try and find out where the pipe is so they can actually carry out an operation on it. It's not a leakage detection tool. However, it is a pipe tracing tool which allows you to trace and mark the route all along through a customer's property. So that if you say the customer has a leak and it's not visible from the surface, you can actually trace the route of the, route of the pipe. And they have an informed level of decision making where you actually make those excavations. Instead of just digging up the patio and thinking it's there, you may be able to dig up in a piece of rose, rose bed or in a piece, piece of lawn three meters away you get access to find to do some leak detection in a much more uh, suitable manner. So those are just two of the um, applications. What's happened is that this is now snowballed into actually hooking up to hydrants and tracing plastic pipes down the street for about 120 meters. A lot of water companies believe they have a GIS plan which shows where their assets are, but uh, very often the case is they're actually somewhere else. So this is actually coming online into tracing plastic pipes across farmyards, through fields, alkathene, PVC. It doesn't matter what the material is, it's not worried about the material. It actually transmits the signal through the water. So that's the water siren. Um, it's proven very successful out there at the moment and it's sort of extended final field state field trials and uh, that will soon be on the market for the UK public. Thank you very much indeed. I'd like to say thank you to the three presenters and also the three innovations that they described. Um, I think you'll agree actually met the criteria of uh, being innovative ideas, new ideas, at least for the sector, although of course one of them came from the Second World War, but um, originally, but uh, um, that have been implemented or are, are being implemented for the benefit of the adopter. And I think particularly this year, you can see that some of the focus of the Water Dragons was really on the legacy pipe work which is in the ground, the lead pipes and the existing pipes and what we need to do to improve leakage rates and also in terms of public health. Um, question and answer session. If you've got questions about SBWWI, I'll try and answer them or, or Carol over there will. Um, or you can come to our stand D14 uh, and uh, get more information about SBWWI. Or questions, preferably about the, uh, the three innovations that you've uh, seen described today. There is a roving mic lady at the back. Yep, one for me in. Thank you very much, David. Ian Walker, WRC Innovation Director. Three really interesting presentations, and um, a couple of which, which I'd seen very recently at WRC's Innovation Day. One of the questions I was asked after that about the Colbus system is, does it work every time? And if it doesn't work at a, at a particular time, what do you do? Um, switched on. <laughs> um, well, the situation depends. Well, when using the pipe, you've got to assess, assess the site um, on the day. And obviously, if the site is not ready for it to work, then you do not use the pipe puller. Um, How do you know if it's not ready to work? What, what are the criteria? Um, I cannot answer that, but I know somebody who can. Daniel Offerman, he's our site technician. I'll pass you over to him. Yeah, basically you um, do test the soil before you cut the pipe. So before you cut the pipe, you, you'll know if you can do it or not. And you go from there. I mean, if you if the so it takes the um, diameter of the pipe, the length of the pipe and the soil shear strength of the pipe. If you've got those three, you put it on a computer, you will, the machine will tell you if you can do it or not. Yeah, thank you very much. Anyone else? I've actually got a question for Ian. Um, developed with Yorkshire as, as the customer, What's the plan for taking it global in terms of uh, the other UK water companies and also outside the UK? Okay. 
uh, we have to uh, obtain full DWI approval. At the moment, for the trials in Yorkshire, it was done on a temporary license to allow new innovative products to be tested out in the market. That data that's generated from those trials is given to the DWI, and we say we're expecting full DWI approval soon. As soon as we have that, we will be going to all the water companies. A lot of them have already been to site uh, in Yorkshire to have, see the process to understand more what it's about. In some way, it's quite an interesting process because Yorkshire themselves uh, have undertaken this process with Ofwat. Uh, they wanted to look at new processes, bring new technology out. So part of that agreement, the funding for this, was that once the system was developed, it would then be available to all the other water companies in the UK. So it wasn't just whilst it was, we were working with Yorkshire Water, they were very much under the instruction that once they developed the system, it was going to be available for all the other water companies. So it's a case of waiting for full approval to come through, then we'll be ready to launch it very soon after. Okay. Shall I ask another question? Um, Rena, uh, on the slide, one of the last slides, um, you had about being carbon positive and the data being presented to the universities to determine that. Is sustainability or car embodied carbon being one of the major decisions, one of the major influences of water companies' decisions these days? Uh, I definitely think so. I am, we're here at Sustainability Live to talk about sustainable use. And with the carbon, uh, with the carbon positivity of the Cobus Pipe Puller, I think it will be a long-term uh, benefit for water service pipe replacement. I think on a 10 meter, three quarter inch lead pipe, the Cobus pipe puller uses around 20.3 kilograms of carbon. But if that material is then recycled, you gain 133 kilos from recycling of that lead. So I think water companies do appreciate that a lot. Another one from Ian. <laughs> Okay, it's a, it's a one for Tony. Um, you said you'd started to use it on larger diameter pipes and distribution pipes. How, how far down the pipe does the sound from the siren propagate? I thought I was going to get away without the question this morning. Anyway, yeah, it was originally for tracing small bore pipes, and in particular, plastic pipes, which has been a real bugbear in the industry to trace. Um, but we've had situations where we've had sort of directionally drilled pipes underneath railway crossings and stuff like that. And where there's a hydrant or an access point reasonably close, we've been able to hook onto the hydrant and send a signal. And we've been getting probably about 120 to 130 meters is our longest success at the moment. Um, it's a new area of operation. What happens is you have to be understand the diameter of the pipe because the signal propagates in a certain way. If the diameter changes, say from a small bore to a large bore, the signal dissipates, which is what we were originally trying to achieve in finding the ferrule position on the main. But as we've gone into hydrants, where you're going through basically a 70 or an 80 millimeter added into the main, um, tracing that signal has been successful up to those distances in some applications, um, but we're doing further research work and tr trials to actually enhance its ability for a wider cross-section of larger diameter assets and, and pipes to um, see where we can trace those as well. And, and the, the system, I presume, is based on creating a pulse within the water which then creates a noise in the pipe? Yeah, it is. It's a, it's a pulsing, it's a bit like the old water thumper which some people have spoken about, but that was fairly disruptive. This is a much more sophisticated signal transmission, we believe. And um, th there's still a little bit of playing around with it with Mekon, who are, you know, their background is in actually in the oil and gas industry and actually doing things in deep subsea uh, research um, to take it away from frequencies that are taken away from the, the environment, such as dolphins and whales and so on, and actually use safe frequencies. And they've brought that technology back into the water industry. So it's an ongoing project. There are benefits that have come out of the water siren so far. But as we identify more challenges, we go back to them and say, how about this, guys? Can you actually have a look and see what you can do something with this? We provide the practical operational support and the live test bed for them to actually try out their gizmos 
and the technology and actually tune it into what we're actually trying to achieve. So it's actually a great partnership at this stage. Can I have one quick one for Rena? Um, please, please help yourself here. The, the, the lead pipe itself will have an intrinsic value. Yeah. How, does, how much does that um, count for the, for the overall cost-benefit analysis? And have you had any approaches from people who would normally be taking lead from roofs? <laughs> <laughs> we haven't, I'm afraid. Um, well, luckily, but um, if you log on to our website, www.covispipefuller.com, there is an interactive calculator that shows the benefits of recycling the lead and it calculates well as per your material we've got all the details on there so if you log on you can have a look so i think the answer to that one is yes it is part of the cost benefit analysis <laughs> anyone else apart from me and like to ask a question yep one at the back please um one for tony from morrison's i'm charlie fairfield edinburgh Napier university what frequency is your siren transmitting? It's got a range of frequencies. Um, what we found is that with the lower frequencies, you tend not to get the same level of accuracy on position, but you get more distance. Um, on the higher frequencies, you're actually able to pinpoint it down. So it's, it's over a range of sort of 40 hertz to uh, 250 hertz at this point in time. Um, but that's the rotation of the, and the technology, which is far too clever for me, is actually in the rotating disks and the configuration of the slots and so on, which is fully patented and uh, top secret even to be sort of business. So, um, <laughs> and, and to be quite honest, I wouldn't understand it anyway. <laughs> okay. Do you want a, a quick techie question, Ian? But basically, with the, with the F4 tech system, the whirlwind system, um, is, you mentioned wet, uh, lead pipes and the fact that they can squash. Does that impact on the efficiency of the air vortex? Good question. Fine. <laughs> um, all I know is that we can do a range of pipes between 10 and 50 millimeters. It does have an influence on the time that you actually clean and line. Uh, the beauty of the system is that it actually, when it comes to the resin, is traveling through in an even line. It's not actually traveling through at different paces through there. But uh, beyond that, I don't know the answer, my friend. Okay, no problem. Anyone else want to put their hand up and ask a question, or will I draw it to a close? Well, thank you very much, everyone, for attending. Thank you for your attention. I hope you found it interesting. Uh, and I'd personally like to thank the three presenters uh, for not only entering the Water Dragons and, and winning, but also coming here today and, and doing the presentation. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you.